Many of us were out celebrating Earth Day and enjoying mm -hmm. nature, but if you missed Earth Day or you didn't get a chance to show Earth a little love, you do have one more chance to do that because there's another observance coming up. This Friday is called Arbor Day, and it's actually much older than Earth Day. Yeah, that's right. Um, this first Arbor Day took place in 1872, believe it or not, but the concept of celebrating trees has strong fruits ah, hey. look at that, uh, in history, <laughs> um, but some of its first documents uh, recording celebrations like this go back as far as the 16th century, and that's only recorded history, of course, but here in 2023, we're going to celebrate, and Claudia Sella is going to share how you can do it there. By planting trees, but not everybody can plant trees depending on where you live or a lot of things. And I'm actually one of those people. I live in an apartment, and unfortunately, planting a tree on my deck is not an option for me. <laughs> but there are a lot of ways that you can help our beautiful speck on the planet we call Mid Michigan, and that will give the bees something to buzz about. Take a look. So everybody celebrates Earth Day, but sometimes people don't think about Arbor Day. Every year on the last Friday of April, we celebrate a holiday known as Arbor Day. And Arbor Day is a celebration of preservation and planting of trees. People celebrate the holiday across the world by planting trees. But if you can't plant trees, there are still ways that you can celebrate, literally right in your backyard. And making your yard bee friendly is the perfect way to start. Rose has been a part of the Commission on the Environment for both East Lansing and Meridian Township, and creating a pollinator garden was the first thing that she did after moving back to mid-Michigan. Well, I was living in Oregon for many years, and um, out there, there was a movement to go from lawns to more gardens and food, so I completely got rid of our yard and converted the whole thing to garden and flowers and food production. And so when I came back here, I was pretty amped up about all of that still, and I was just trying to carry that, that energy over. The function of a pollinator garden is very simple. You plant things that are native to the area you live and watch the bees take over from there, getting their fill of nutrition while taking care of the garden at the same time and they get shelter they need to survive too. Turf grass is just one thing, it's a monoculture. And anytime you have something like that going on, and especially it's not flowering, it's not producing any food, it's not really producing any habitat for our pollinators. So what we want is a variety of plants and a, and a variety of food sources and a variety of places where our pollinators can take shelter. And the pollen in those blooms are vital food sources for, for pollinators like bees, bumblebees, butterflies, and other insects. And uh, those are populations that we rely on as, as a species ourselves. We want to plant things that are flowering at different times, and we want to try to stick to native species as best we can, because those are going to be the easiest for us to care for. Planting things like coneflower, black-eyed Susans, and bee balm are great ways to get started. But there are other ways to help the bees as well and things we should try avoiding. Goody, we have a lawnmower. Um, avoid mowing your lawn all the time. Um, do it every two to three weeks if you can handle that. So No Mow May is an international conservation initiative where um, residents, businesses, and other property owners forego or reduce the amount of mowing that they do in the month of May to allow the flowers and the, the, the things that we sometimes refer to as weeds, like dandelions and clover, to bloom rather than mow them over. I know this is going to make people cringe, but leave it unmulched, leave it just, you know, bare dirt so that some of these insects that burrow into the ground have a place to be. You can also do things like what's behind me. This is a bee hotel. You can get bee boxes, then that will attract, you know, other varieties of bees like mason bees. They don't sting at all. They just buzz around and, and uh, pollinate. And the best part is you can ease into it. You can start slow, taking it one step at a time. We do really have the power to, to make an impact at the scale of our yard. Um, and you, if you don't have a yard, if you live in an apartment building or if you're a student, you can put some little plants out on your, on your patio or on your deck if you have one. And every little step is a big step closer to helping the bees that help the trees. Yeah, unfortunately, there was actually no vacancy at the Bee Hotel, but there are a lot of events this weekend where you don't need a hotel room 
to attend. Ah, I see what you did there. Thank you, Claudia. That was so fun. Well, if you want a fun way to celebrate Arbor Day, MSU will be holding a planting event, and the first 100 people to show up will get free seedlings. Ooh. Uh, Real Botanical Gar Beale Botanical Gardens will also be celebrating their 150th anniversary this Arbor Day as well, and you can find all this information and more at WLX.com. Awesome. We'll